Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Abed Jin's SketchUp Workshop. So as promised, we'll be taking a look at our Frank set again and this time we will be expanding it to include an archery range. So the point of this video is to show you how now, after painstakingly crafting a ton of custom assets for one building, you will be using those assets in a smart way in order to produce more buildings much faster. So that's why we're going to sort of recycle or gut our barracks building today and somehow turn it into a archery range. So we're going to put this here. Now first I want to point out some obvious changes. I changed the shape of the roof and I added brighter roof tiles to fit the overall uh, mood of Age of Empires better. Also, I have changed the texture on the walls from a bluish texture to a beige one. So, uh, always try to match your textures with what Age of Empires already has on offer, because the color palette is limited, so that's the thing. Also, I changed, the, uh, as I already said, I changed the shape of the barracks into a bit of a V-shaped uh, roof. I think it looks a bit more warlike and fitting for a barracks. So, now I just want to show you what it looks like or what it will look like in-game. Uh, as you can see, the textures are much brighter. Everything is just shinier compared to how it was before. So... Uh, in order to achieve this, I'm just going to walk you through this in a very, let's say, in a few steps. You get yourself GIMP. Here it is. You load up the image after you rendered it. Not so. So just after you rendered it and you increase saturation here by going to colors, hue, saturation, and you increase it according to taste. Right. So, for example, uh, and not only according to taste, but according to the current color palette of your building. So this building actually needed a raise of 50 saturation here in order to get nicer colors. But some of my other buildings were already going too bright at 5 to 10. So it's really situational. Now, as you have seen, I already added, I also added a little door here. Uh, so, well, one, uh, so on the hinges to make it look a bit more lively. So, uh, that's basically it. Uh, let's just check out if I have an image. Ah, here I have it. So, this is the barracks within Age of Empires. So, it's fitting the colors much better. So, this is what you should aim for. Okay, so back to the task at hand, the archery range. Now, the archery range has several important elements. Those elements being the main building, a small roof where there is supposedly a shooting range, right? And the targets themselves, stairs leading up to a tower. And that's the main part of what we want to create today. So let's see if we can craft a tower and let's make it frank looking. So. Now, hmm, oh well, uh, this is three point uh, three times three tiles, so I can't really go that wild on the tower, <laughs> but let's see what I can do. So, uh, now, very often I make my buildings or my archery range towers much taller than the barracks is, and I have to admit it's a bit of a mistake, so... I'll try to avoid it this time, and I hope you will also avoid it. Oh, very nice. So the texture kind of fit in, so I don't have to worry too much about it. Okay, nice. So we're just going to keep this circle around it. And now I'm going to take a look at this texture. So this is actually copied from the front-facing side of the... Uh, Tower of Flies. We all know that building from the map editor and from the 
Saladin campaign, I believe. So that's where you that's where I found the texture. Now, it's always good to add a little bit of dimension to it, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. So hop, hop, and hop. So here is a little bit of 3D to those boards, even though I think they won't need it. Now, creating a new building, especially one that's flashy, takes a bit more than just cutting another building. Right? So, of course, if I wanted to keep the, ba uh, the shapes basic and simple, that wouldn't be a problem. But we are doing a round tower here, so that's going to take some uh, extra work. So what I would like you to do is, so uh, what I would like you to do is maybe not go completely round on the tower, turn it into a hexagonal tower, or preferably a square one for the very beginning. But since this is a sort of tutorial where I'm also supposed to show off some extra tricks let's go this let's go this route so uh, maybe so uh, well I'm just gonna drop a bit of history as I am taking care of this tower uh, so here we have some wooden hoardings uh, you probably if you have some old castles close to your home uh, you will probably notice that those castles have holes in most of their walls. Now, uh, those holes were actually left there in order to implement or to put up hoardings during, uh, let's say, uh, a time of uh, war. So the hoardings were quick of wooden terraces or uh, quick wooden battlements. Uh, which were fast to construct, you just put them up, really, and they would provide shooting galleries for archers and just a general notice to the attackers. Hey, this castle is ready to fend you off. So, hoardings were really essential. And of course, some castles had more sophisticated hoardings, which, now I do not know how to pronounce the word, but they would probably but they would be specialized holes close to the end of the walls. Machicolations, I believe. So, that's it. All right. Now, here we are following... Here we are following the shape of the tower to try to make a rounded uh, set of hoardings. So, I think it's going well. And, now comes a little bonus. So you're going to say, oh, but Abe, that's not really finished. Ta -ta -ta, it is. But how? <laughs> well, uh, basically, what we are doing here is creating an isometric building. That means that we have to sometimes cut our losses and just admit that there will be only two sides of the building visible. So what you should do is focus on the, uh, well, Technically, you know, focus on the building and treat it as a 2D entity, which it will be when you put it in game. Right? So you can go full out and, you know, tend to every single uh, element of the building. But trust me, right, you know, for your first few buildings, let's keep it simple. Okay, so here we go. So the tower's hoardings are finished now. Now comes the roof of the tower. And again, I'm going to show off a little bit of a conical roof. So we have seen those, uh, these roofs were seen quite often. They're great at, first of all, they're more durable than ordinary roofs because they handle rain much better. Then they were also more expensive and it's something that lords would like to put on their castles. And I think that for a defensive structure, these roofs were perfect because of their angled shape, which meant that they would be great at 
resisting enemy fire. So this little bit is just too stubborn to go, so we're going to keep it. Okay. Now the roof has been built, or we have created the basic conical shape of the roof. So now I want us to put it here. Now, texturing a whole roof can be tedious. So what I like to do is I like to split it up. So let's see if this roof will actually work that way. Okay, perfect. This and then this. And then we uh, make this into a group. We explode the roof intersect the faces with the model and voila now we have one quarter of the roof ready so we separate it and now we tend to the little mishap that happened at the top part of the cone so remember uh, using the view geometry you can take a quick look at what needs to be deleted and voila, a big chunk of the roof done. Well, at least in shape. Now we need to texture it. So come over here, Rufy. So we'll split it like this. Okay, now some of these will get projected. Once they get projected, you remember, they cleanly and beautifully just fit to the rest of the roof. Now, uh, this texture has a few drawbacks. It's not really completely seamless. I mean, it is seamless, but could be better. So we're going to adjust the way the roof is. Okay, perfect. There we go. Now it's done. So I then what you need to do is copy the roof four times, or actually add an additional three times, sorry, or like this, turn it into a group, and voila, now you got yourself a conical roof, there you go, So and you put it on top, so looks much better, right? And then what we do with the rest of the tower is we resize it to fit the roof. So now we got ourselves a perfectly adequate archery range tower with pretty much all the bells and whistles. Now, an additional uh, thing which I would suggest is to remember that this this roof is also a very significant resource for you. Many other buildings will use this roof shape, but they will al also use towers. So this could be your, I don't know, church tower, uh, market market tower, one of the castle turrets, or it could be the base of your fortified walls. So. Really, the, the options here are great now that you have one of these. So now, let's just see what it's going to look like once rendered. We're just going to steal this floor and put it here within the, car, the turret. We're just going to turn that into a group. Now, let's savagely push out this light here. And let's turn it into another group. So let's render this bad boy. Remember, making many adjustments is always fine. Let's go to our perspective. No, not the current selection only. I want the whole thing.
All right, now the rendering process is coming up real nice. And I hope that in the next 10-ish seconds, we'll have our image. So ray tracing, we hear that phrase a lot. We stop it at AA, and we are taking a look at our little tower. Now, isn't she a beauty? There we go. So this is basically the shape of what we want to have in our, you know, as our archery range tower. So uh, this will be the first part, uh, pardon, this will be the first part of the archery range tutorial. I hope you enjoyed and I hope that we'll be finishing up the rest of the building in the next part. Thank you very much for watching and have a nice day. Thank you. And don't forget to comment and subscribe for more such content. Bye-bye.